for a young girl, she's had a throat slit. Poltergeist, highwaymen and murder await the team in Wiltshire. Oh, there's somebody with us. Haunted. The inn behind me is said to be one of the most haunted pubs in Wiltshire. Highwaymen, poltergeist activity, and dark secrets. We just had to come and investigate the Black Swan. The town of Devizes lies in the heart of Wiltshire and can offer us centuries of historical upheaval. The town dates back over 900 years to Norman occupation and taking pride of place in its center is the 18th century Black Swan Hotel. Beneath it lies mystical cellars and tunnels which date back to the 1600s when a previous public house stood on this same site. The building mysteriously I wouldn't say burnt down, but had a very serious fire in 1737 and parts of it were rebuilt. We know for a fact it goes back to 1732, but where I'm sitting now in the cellars, they go back a lot farther. I think they go back at least to the 1600s and there have probably been um, foundations of buildings on this site um, right back to medieval times. <laughs> This beautiful room was once a meeting place for the Black Swan Masonic Lodge. Could one of its members still be haunting here as objects like to move around on their own? Doors open and close at will and footsteps are heard when no one is here. When I first arrived here I was pretty sceptical on everything and um, you know as the months have gone on I you know really believe there is stuff here. There is a reported sighting of one of the landlords who was named Ambrose Sainsbury. He was landlord here, he was also a horse dealer and they say that he was also in with the highwaymen. In room four, the ghost of a lady has been seen walking across the floor many times. She then disappears through this wall. Another ghost of a lady has been seen sitting and staring out of this window. She seems distressed and is crying. The landlady, Pam, on many occasions over a period of years, has reported not seeing a ghost, but seeing a figure sitting in the corner of the restaurant wearing a big round-topped hat and a shabby coat. All she does is go to the staff and say, there's a gentleman wants serving in the corner. Of course, they go over there. Guess what? Nobody there. The pub cellars are part of an elaborate tunneling system that used to run under the streets of Devizes. Ghostly, shadowy figures have been seen wandering from room to room here. Also, many of the staff members have had the feeling of being watched, but this is not the most haunted part of the cellars. It's in this area where a lot of paranormal activity occurs, and people say it's generated from behind this wall, ever since a couple of bricks were removed. It's going to be quite an interesting experience tonight because we've got these two sightings of ghosts here. We're not sure who the lady is. Perhaps we may find out more tonight. But an awful lot of the ghostly goings on seem to emanate from here, from these old cellars. So can we believe what people have reportedly seen with their own eyes? How haunted is the Black Swan Hotel? We have 24 hours 
to find out. One person who has always wanted to join a most haunted investigation is Uri Geller. He is known throughout the world for his spoon bending skills, but he isn't just a one trick wonder. He was delighted to join our team in order to help during our investigation. Hi Yvette, it's great being here, you know, I can already feel some kind of an energy you can. here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Have the you, minute I walked in here. Have you been involved in lots of paranormal investigations, you know, in different properties throughout the world? Yes, I have. Not too many, though. Uh, but I am a total believer. I'm very open-minded, simply because I have seen a ghost myself. When was that? Years ago. I was about 20 years old in Tel Aviv. What's your actual belief on uh, what happens when we die? What do you think it is? Do you think there are such things as ghosts? Or do you think they're just recordings of time? No, I believe that ghosts do exist. I believe that when we die, our souls, our spirits survive us. Even Einstein, you know, scientifically proved that energy cannot be destroyed. Our souls are a source of energy. That survives us leaves the body we either go to the other side we call it heaven paradise we either reincarnate into a newborn child or even into an animal or we stay around to haunt a place that's my theory well hopefully we'll see some ghosts tonight are you are you hopeful to see something here tonight already you're saying you're picking up some energies do you think something's going to happen here i think so i'm very excited because this is encountering the unknown, the mysterious, the paranormal. As usual, psychologist and parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe is with us. Prior to our arrival, he has spent time at the Black Swan, learning more of its ghostly tales. So what does he hope to discover from tonight's investigation? The great thing about this place is all the different types of phenomena that have been reported. Poltergeist activity, apparitions have been seen, and there have been numerous investigations using psychics, psychometrists, mediums. So I'm fascinated by the fact that we may actually see poltergeist activity this evening. We invited medium Derek Okora to join us at the Black Swan Hotel. But what deadly secrets does its walls hide from the most haunted team? Hmm. Just answering the energies here. Um, what I'm getting here is two levels of time. Um, I'm getting a mentality of a spirit person who's very interested that we're here, the whole team. I'm getting a, a, a male and also a female that seem to be very close in the ether to us here. And I want to go here. I, I just want, with the two of them, so to speak, go through um, a, a history of what they would do, and their energies would come very close to these windows here. And I feel, most definitely, that they do this in the sequence of times, many times, and f outside from the physical, I feel that either a silhouette of these people would actually be seen by people who are walking outside. Mm -hmm. It's like as if they see people looking through the window. Did they used to live here? Yes, without a doubt. I know the man, the man linked with the lady, his life was taken away from him here. I also feel uh, the lady also, her life was taken. There was two ladies whose two ladies' lives slaughtered here on this premise. So they were murdered? Yes, they were the lives, and gruesomely as well. How and why? It didn't take place in this bedroom. But their energies come up, they come up 
from the lower levels. I, I feel as if, um, yes, without a doubt, slaughter, ooh, dis, um, cutting pieces and all that is linked and the energy. And I feel these two souls here were part of the slaughter. What do you, what do you feel, Lily? God, I feel something that is, um, I see the sea, the ocean, I see a ship is connected, and then I also see a sort of a lot of people gathered around um, something that looks almost like um, something to do with fighting, like, almost like a like a bare knuckle fighting. I feel death, definitely. And I, I feel that the, 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 the slaughter or the murder that you felt had a connection to two people who fought each other. I see the war. For some reason, suddenly I see the war. Yes. A connection to the First World and Second World War. I feel very, very... I get goosebumps. Look, my hair stands mm. on end. You know something? When we go down, mm. so, thank you. When we go down, way down, there are things that can be found that should be unearthed that will have a major, major significance and link with what is going to be said in this investigation tonight. Mm. And I feel we have to go and we have to break open. We have to break open, go through into another chamber. And there, in that other chamber, we're going to see remnants of the past in a link with what of this slaughter and maybe pinpoint an energy of a man who wears this darkened cloak He's the murderer. And it's Do you feel that the spirit of that evil person is it still it's here. haunting this place? Absolutely. It is here. If he was to be seen spiritually, his spirit outline, he would be seen with this like cloak covering and bent Limping. over and doing this. Yeah. But who is he? What's, he? what's his connection? to the building. I know you say he's he's murdered, but what is his connection? Why is what has he done? Did he did he own it? Did he live here? Did he visit? What did he do? Oh look what they're showing me. Oh I, s I see men at work carrying it seems to be sacks, boxes, and they seem to be getting told to hurry hurry, hurry, and then I see the cloaked figure who is promising these men in order to do the work, monies to shift this cargo, ships, delinquent ships. He is the governor, he's the, he's the, he's the captain. Mm. Mary! Something Mary. Mary! I, I, I swear I actually felt the, the, the name Mary. You have to believe me. Yes. Are you picking the up name, the name? Well, the name Mary came to my mind minutes ago. Um, Mary McFadden. Mac, that's it. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Mary McFadden. See, I... I, I I said Mac before. I okay. Richard, it's, it's Yvette Mary. here. Can you check in the records and see if we have a Mary McFadden who is connected to the property, please? Just one minute. Yeah, I'll have a look. Just give me a couple of minutes. As we leave Richard to verify the information, we move away from room four and towards a part of the building that's rife with poltergeist activity. What else can we expect to unearth as we investigate the Black Swan Hotel? There's something there. 
After visiting room 4 at the Black Swan Hotel, Derek Akora and our celebrity guest Uri Geller have both supplied several pieces of sensory information. In addition to a possible female presence called Mary McFadden, they both felt that the building had nautical and military connections. And as we move down to the first floor conference room, our historian Richard Felix gave us the results of his research. Hi Richard. Hello Eva, can you hear me over? Hi, yeah, we just moved into the second room. Now I have got some information for you. Um, Mary McFadden, we, we can't find any trace of, of her at the moment. Um, although they did, they did earlier mention a Scottish person, which is, is possible. Uh, but strangely enough, they also mentioned a boxer. And the landlord here in the 1960s, Dick McBride, was indeed a boxer. And they also mentioned soldiers, um, Second World War, and devises during the Second World War was um, a camp for, for German and also Italian prisoners of war. Over. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. But what makes it more amazing is that we do have information about the lady that Derek referred to as Mary. As a psychic artist, Brian Shepard claims the ability to detect and draw paranormal elements. Earlier that afternoon, we had shown him two specific areas of the Black Swan, starting with room four. His findings were to shock the landlord and landlady. Okay, I've been upstairs to bedroom four, which, um, and you can see what I've drawn, uh, came across as a, a, a room that is being dominated by a female presence. Now, for some reason, I'm getting this image that is, you know, okay, a girl mm -hmm. that was pregnant. Yes. Um, and the other elements are a child, or in this case, lack of one. So whether she's losing a child, but all I'm getting is just the hand reaching or See. being separated from her, yeah. and significantly a key. I, I wouldn't know about the pregnancy bit, right. sort of thing, but the, the the face is sort of how we sort of people or the sadness of it. We do know about the pregnancy. Pre the so little girl that first came here, was she died in childbirth. So this is either, and I've drawn. I mean, I know the furniture is different, but this is like either a bed or a chair, and that didn't. Was well, I wasn't sure, but that was by the window anyway. And then I was drawn. I had drawn the key because that seemed very significant. Do you think and she was locked in? Yeah, but I think she's locking herself in and locking other people out. Did you get a name with her? I, well, what, what's coming across to me is, is either someone, an M, and like, and I can't be specific at this, but Mar Margaret or uh, Mary or something like that. The fact that Brian has named the pregnant lady as Mary and sat her by room four's window is extraordinary. Was she the victim of murder or did she die in childbirth? As we continue our investigation in the hotel's first floor conference room, I'm keen to see if Derek and Uri can reveal more about the source of the unexplained footsteps and door handle rattles. Mm. Yeah. 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 
there's an entry and an exit. Um, he um, walks round at speed at times, so there could be noises. Audible, audible is definitely, um, and I feel also probably voice as well. Um, maybe shadowy figure or figures. But more than anything else, displacements of cutlery, crockery, and things I feel is most evident in this area. It's a person who's just mischievous, a person who would pull your leg in reality, in physical life. Can you give me a name for this person? Well, as I've just asked for that name, Sam has been, he just gives me Joe, Joseph. Joseph. Although Derek was unable to provide us with a surname for Joseph, it seems that the conference room is prompting both psychics to detect energies that relate to the building's history. This is the heart of this building, almost like maybe there was a fire here once, mm -hmm. or someone tried to escape from there. Yes. Um, someone fell out, someone got hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's almost like this section was added on to yes. it because something burnt off. So it's this section here that we're talking about. Yes. This section Richard, here. can you what? just confirm or not <laughs> confirm whether there was a fire here? Oh, there was a fire here then? No, no, I'm asking. There was a fire here, Yvette. Um, and at another occasion, the building was also struck by lightning. Okay. Could it be that? That girl, Mary, was burnt alive here because that person that you've seen in row number four mm -hmm. was maybe the instigator, the person who started the fire. Yuri, it could well be. It could well be. Yeah. You know, it's almost like it wasn't an accident. There was a yeah. sabotage here. Someone mm. did it purposely. Someone burnt yeah. this try to burn this place. Because in this corner there is evidence in the residual energy jumping out at me of, uh, of malice, mm. malice of intent and, and feelings, you know, of that. It's like as if, yeah, I, I'm, I'm conjuring up something. But this, is, is, this. Is, this is Joseph. You, I feel it, that name, Joel Joseph. It's is causing it, yeah. all the, the things yeah. to happen in here. Yeah. Is that yeah. That you took is that significant? Yes. That path coming up round this here way. Yes. And through there. Yeah. And I feel uh, noises. And also, I wouldn't be at all surprised whether this spirit soul would um, were uh, sounds and what have you. Not only do those things, but would hear uh, crazy little shrieks and things like that. Well, we've had Colin here the landlord it, it, does that sort of thing happen in this room you know do are things moved around in this room uh yes i mean on that shelf up there um oh, this i'm always pushing the articles back on because you they just fall put off. my hand up here yeah i know i, I was yeah. i saw that and i put they, it they up all, here because uh, i felt kinetic energy here they all moved to the edge in the glass uh, we've been in here and the glass has been broke on the floor. The other shelves, as you see, it's got lots of stuff on and they haven't fell off. Yeah. But that one is prone to it, you know. Both Derek and Uri have highlighted a high degree of malicious intent in the conference room and a possible link to the murdered girl that they're calling Mary. Could her or her child's remains still lie here? at the Black Swan. When we go down, way down, there are things that can be found that should be unearthed that will have a major, major significance and link with what is going to be said in this investigation tonight. Both Derek and Uri identified this area as the hotel's basement cellar. And as we switched to our night vision cameras, their fears were immediately confirmed. Oh. Um, 
Why are you both going ooh? Because it's almost like a, a cold um, okay. wind, a, a, a dense oh. with death. Oh, That's yes. it. Yes. There's an energy, a negative energy, um, that actually is involved down in this area. Um, not just negative, a bad individual soul when he was here he's still his essence is still strong he, he's he's um, he's not happy his energy for us to be here he's um oh god it's like whilst we come into this atmosphere here all around me i feel as if i've got this um essence of uh, screaming a feeling of butchery, a feeling of um, slaughter of humans. And the evil is centered and is still here in this ether. I see and feel uh, almost like a small mass grave. Um, I feel that the walls, yes. the brick, the mortar is drenched in blood yeah. and uh, some gruesome and awful horrific things were done here oh yes and maybe there is more than one spirit Derek here uh, there is uh, are they a, here a, now? A, 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 the one person I see I feel um, I sense with a s scar on, it, on, on his face uh, and, and wearing maybe that cloak, the, the dark yes, that's robe him. and... That's him. So again, Derek and Uri have sensed an episode of violent bloodshed associated with the presence of the mysterious cloaked figure. As our investigation at the Black Swan continues, will he or any other spirits make their presence felt? Our investigation in Wiltshire has led us from a murdered girl in room four down into the Black Swan's chilling cellar. Derek and our celebrity guest, Uri Geller, detect negative and evil spirits all around us and feel that a dark secret lies nearby. My chest feels so tight and I'm taking on the, I feel the energies of this individual and the breathing. It's like as if I can't get my breath. So it, 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 the soul would have suffered, I don't know, to the chest. There is a secrecy down in this uh, tunnel. And, but this wall here, you Which know, one? this one facing us here, yes. I'm drawn so much to there that behind that wall, there's something that can be, can be uncovered, discovered, something that we're not seeing at the moment and Ooh, would be can, behind there. Who can make that noise then? Not There's that. There's another one. Gosh, that was the other one. Wait, wait. I, I, I heard a very faint cry of a, of, of a girl. EMF meters. What? <gasps> what was that noise then? Behind you, Kieran. Yes. The door open. Oh, I'm getting right. goosebumps again. Yes. Okay. I did hear a cry. I, heard, did I closed the door so there's nobody behind us. Was the EMF meter going off? The EMF meter is at max. It was a very unusual sequence of events during which Kieran reported a sudden maximum reading on his EMF meter. Many theories suggest that the presence of a ghost will disrupt a room's electromagnetic field. Oh, God. Okay, so I 
I've got a young girl. I've got a young girl. She's had her throat slit. Yeah, yes. She's a young girl here. Oh, oh, God. She's alive. She's alive. And she's crawling. She's crawling across the floor. And the blood is flowing from her. He's, the, he's standing above her. It, it's like as if he wants her to crawl. And she's screaming out. And he's then he's put his foot on her back and he's pressed her down. Her blood's mm. flowing from her. She's screaming. She's still alive. The, he's, he's, he's crawled here into this area. Her energies. Here. I feel it now. There is something behind that wall. Yes. There is. I don't know what it is. Yes. But it's something that has it, been it left. Been bricked yes. Uh, to hide. Yes. To to shelter. Look, Yuri. Can I just give you the shape that Sam is doing to me? Look what this is. Look. Here. Look. Can we get a light, please? This height, mm -hmm. right, to here, there's the line, to here, if this is taken down, so and this it's goes be back feet, this so many feet, and then we have to go through again. It's almost like I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to put my hand in here, feeling that something might grab it. Put your hand in. Oh. Go on. Oh my gosh, it's cold. Derek, you've got to try this. Yes, I'm down here. You know, I feel something almost... Derek, put, put your hand, you'll feel almost like you're putting it into a refrigerator. Yes. Yeah, it's at the back I, of here. That's There's back things here at back. the back. And behind here, if that can be, if that can be taken away, you will get something significant, okay? Mm -hmm. We know a lot more. Really, you feel that? Yeah. We had to investigate this further, and after a discussion with Colin, the landlord, he agreed that we could knock down part of this wall. But before we could do this, we wanted to give psychic artist Brian Shepherd the opportunity to illustrate in his own way which prominent spirits exist in the cellar. Now, I believe that this character isn't only manifest in this small area here, but is from further afield. So, whatever is, or if there is anything beyond these walls, I, I feel that this is where this character is, is coming from, basically. We showed Brian's drawing to the landlord and landlady, who have frequently witnessed the ghostly image of a disheveled man sitting in the bar. They both confirmed that this drawing strongly resembled the apparition. Despite her unease following Brian's accurate depiction of this man, landlady Pam volunteered to join Richard, Kath and myself in room four as we split up in order to begin the night vigils. This is where hotel guests have reported the sighting of a young girl who sits and watches the marketplace through the bedroom window. Try and move something. Anything at all. We're here to help you. Please, can you try and move the chair by the window? And try and move the curtains. I know you don't want us here, but we will go. But give us a sign to show us that you don't want us here. Make a noise. Do anything at all. Please, try hard. Curtains are moving. You're up. Is the window open? Yeah. Is that open? I'm not against it. I didn't feel it was open. 
Put it right on so no other look then. Spirits that um, occupy this room, if there are any, we know you've been seen, we know you do exist. Could you use our collective energy to try and show yourself? By the chair, or on the chair. Actually manifest yourself. Unless you show yourself to us. <laughs> What's the matter? Something on the neck. What? There was something on my neck. What? Spider-wise? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I just, that was something on my neck. It wasn't a tickle, it was quite heavy. Whoever's in this room, you're making an effort. Can you do that again? Can you want another one? Another What's one. What's the matter? You're all right. I'm scared. There is a spirit that occupies this room. Please try. Please, please try very hard to manifest yourself or make some other sign. Oh! Just have a um, light anomaly come right past you, Pam. Neither of these two events could be explained, but Pam and the rest of us were starting to feel quite unnerved. It seemed that some sort of presence may have been attempting to contact us. With this in mind, Alex, a new member of the Most Haunted team, joined Derek, Kieran and John in the first floor conference room. This is where unexplained footsteps have been heard and objects reportedly move around of their own accord. Let me know how you the clock. Someone whack the clock. Please come along the room. There she, oh whoa, she's to the right. She's trying to manifest. She's to the right here. Tint, train the camp. There, she's moved there. Look, show, show yourself. Oh, shit, I feel all goosebumps. Show yourself, yeah. She's there. I feel come like on, I've got honey. goosebumps. Please come forward. Come closer. Where is she now, Derek? She's over. She's moved over towards, not close to the clock, by the, the, the ending of the wall. She, I don't know what she used, but she tapped on that clock. You hit the... Well, I, I, I heard that distinctly, and yeah. that's that's a sound I can I can say wasn't wasn't a radiator, wasn't anything. It sounded like a, a distinct tap. It sounded like like a pen being you know hitting something metal, and that was definitely distinct. I gave me a shock when I did it. As the evidence grows, one final barrier stands in our way. As the cellar wall crumbles, would we regret unearthing the black swan secret? There's something there. What was that? Somebody with us.
here, Derek and Uri both strongly felt that one particular wall in the cellar holds a dark and bloody secret. We just had to investigate this further. The Black Swan's owners had given us permission to break through this wall. So with a nervous audience behind him, Carl volunteered to dismantle the 300-year-old brickwork. I can hardly breathe. Okay, it's okay. If you don't feel right, like you come down, okay? Uh, Is that another piece of bone? Yeah, it's more bone. It's more bone. That's you as well. Easy. This is the lower left foot. Lower left foot. This has been sealed up for some reason. Carl was anxious to break through a second wall. We were all very aware that having found two bones, there could somewhere be the remains of a whole body, possibly that of a young girl that Derek had identified earlier. I feel quite depressed, and there's certainly something that doesn't want me out behind this wall. Mm. I can feel that. There is a feeling of pressure now. After much perseverance, Carl managed to dislodge several bricks, but the remainder of this ancient wall stood firm. Oh, it's just I don't think there's any point in going any further, mate. No. no. There's something no. behind there, and it and it it's been filled in. This is this has been carefully laid to stop anyone coming in. I know it does. And that's very cleverly put together. Yeah, it's really well done. I mean, it's like a semicircle of brickwork. Yeah. Through this whole system here. Yeah. But when you when you push through it, it just tightens itself. The only way you can actually yeah. do it is by pulling it towards you. Yeah. Yeah. Then we pull it towards yeah. to have specific equipment. But when I pull that two or three bricks, that there's another set of earth behind that. Yes. But if you get through that, that's where the... I think it's very cleverly uh, done. Mm. It has immense secret. 
Without demolishing this entire network of elaborate chambers, any secrets that do lie here will for now remain concealed. Finding the bones was an incredible discovery, and we had planned to conclude our investigation here. But this appears to be more than just a normal night's work. Five years ago, poltergeist activity began in the cellar when a local historian removed two bricks from this wall. This evening, we have partly demolished the same wall. Would this intensify the paranormal activity? We had to go back for one last vigil. There is uh, so much uh, presence here. It's like we're being watched. Um, if you look around, you don't see the eyes. But I can sense their eyes watching us. Oh, God. I can see eyes. Oh. Eyes. Um, wow. Oh, oh, fantastic light anomaly. Yes. It came from the wall, yes. it, and it arced, and it went whoo, really? really slowly. That was a spirit. Yeah. Because when I said eyes, it could have been that they heard us, and they wanted to show us a sign. spirit world in here with us now. Any spirit, if it for some reason is trapped behind the wall, anyone that was buried there many years ago that wants to gain release, if there is then please try and make contact with us. Now is your chance, we want to help you. We want to help you gain release if that's what you want. Please make us a sign. Since we're all here and it's so quiet, I think that we should connect now to the spirit world. To those of you who are here and watching us. We're very close to knowing what happened to you all. There is definitely a presence here, oh, maybe yes. Even more. Yes. Right? Well, you get yeah. this really strong feeling, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You get something is very close yeah. by. But it's something. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, I see a lot of people. Oh god, I'm scared. Yeah, oh, Yvette, I think, I think, I think they want us out of here. There's something out there. There's isn't something it? there. What, what was, was that? that? Some, uh, oh, there's somebody with us. That was. There is somebody with us, yeah. That was something. Was like something thrilled. That yeah. was a stone. It was, it was. That was something from the ceiling. It was something softer than a stone, I think. But it was a sign. The stone really did sound like it had been thrown, which made us think that it couldn't be connected to the demolition earlier on. It proved to be an unnerving end to an intriguing investigation at the Black Swan Hotel. The whole experience was great, and to be with Uri Geller for the night like that, I found fantastic. The thing that really got to me was the way that, that Derek and Uri tended to interact together. Um, they were feeding off each other, and it was, it was extremely interesting to hear. And they came up with some very interesting facts. They, they mentioned 
the fact that there were soldiers there, and yes, during the Second World War, of course, um, it was a prisoner of war camp in the area. Uh, I was quite impressed with it, with, with that, but um, I must be honest with you, uh, the psychic artist impressed me beyond words. Um, Brian really came up trumps. Then, of course, we had the, the incidents um, down below in the cellars, of course, because there's reputedly a tunnel down there, and all the ghostly goings on seemed to emanate from where the supposed tunnel was. And Carl, in his, his usual way, of course, was up there on the ladder and, and trying to get through the thing, and he actually came up with some bones. And things happened. We definitely contacted someone down there. There were noises, there were bumps, and I must be honest with you, at, at certain times, Uri's face, well, I mean, he really seemed to be quite taken aback. I went through a, quite an interesting experience, and I am now much more convinced that there, there is a presence here, maybe more than one, maybe two or three. It gives us a glimpse into the beyond. Here at the Black Swan, last night's investigation was unique because we had Derek Akora, who was claiming to get messages through as a medium. Got a young girl, she's had her throat slit. And Uri Geller, who was claiming to get messages through as a psychic. I see the sea, the ocean. And certainly if you look at what they were saying linguistically, there were, there did appear to be at least different sources for their messages. However, was it evidential? In my opinion, no. There was a lot of feeding off each other between the two of them and the very minute and very, very basic and general facts were exaggerated into huge stories because of the feeding off each other. Brian, the psychic artist, produced a picture that quite accurately matched previous eyewitness accounts. Is that something, you know, this yeah. image similar to what you say you've seen here? Yeah. yeah. The difficulty in this sort of circumstance, however, is ensuring that he has no knowledge of these eyewitness accounts or any pictures or photographs of the actual apparition or ghost that's seen in that particular room. The level of detail in the picture was great and certainly Derek confirmed some of the information that was on the picture. However, in terms of evidence of the paranormal, it's not 100% convincing. So were the events of last night just a figment of our imagination or does the black swan really play host to tortured souls? Until next time. Sleep tight. It's filled with things that shouldn't happen and shouldn't be possible. Jane Golden investigates tonight at 10.30 only on Living TV. But stay tuned to Living TV because coming next it's Most Haunted Extra.